Okay. Sorry, everyone, if you had to wait in the waiting room for just a minute. Um, the technical, uh, I don't want to say difficulty, but just a new thing for us letting people in through the waiting room. So everyone, sh uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Carissa Chuka. I'm with Results Repeat. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our second Lunch and Learn with our SEO manager, Lexi Quinn. Um, I'll turn this over to Lexi in just a minute, but just to uh, a couple of notes before we get started. Um, we're going to send a recording of this webinar around to everyone after, so feel free to sit back, relax, enjoy uh, the webinar, think about what questions you may want to ask, and just know that you'll have access to it later to um, to you know a, a reference back to. Um, we'll also be posting it on our YouTube page, so you can look for it there, or we'll, we'll send it out to you via email. We're also going to be hosting another Lunch and Learn next Wednesday at this exact same time on setting up your first social media ads campaign. So if you've never done that, or maybe you've done it and you're not sure if you've done it correctly, uh, or if you're interested in doing it, please jump on. That'll be another 20 to 30 minute um, informal webinar similar to this one with the head of our paid ads team, Dylan. And then lastly, everyone here today is muted. So if you, um, you know, that's so that we can hear Lexi give her presentation. But if you would like to uh, ask a question, just pop that into the chat box and we'll do the Q&A at the end. Um, so thank you again so much for attending and here's Lexi. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just checking to make sure you, somebody can hear me okay. Yes, all right. Uh, my name is Lexi and I am an account manager in the SEO team with Results Repeat. And just real quick, a little bit about me. I grew up in Dallas, Texas, um, considering that the majority of our participants are probably up in the Northeast. I usually kind of keep that to, to myself, considering the, uh, the football fans that we might be. Um, but I moved up here for, for school. I went to Ursinus College and part of that experience took me over to Japan. I uh, was an international business major and uh, two minors of Japanese and economics. And then right out of school, it was just about the perfect timing to uh, jump in as digital marketing started to be a novelty. And I've been in this business ever since and have really enjoyed the evolution. And I'm thrilled to be a part of the Results Repeat team. And today we're gonna talk about uh, Google My Business and how to kind of get the most out of it. Because now more than ever, um, businesses really are trying to become a little bit more hyper-local considering what's happening in our world. We really do need to be aware that we need to reach the customers who have continued to be uh, loyal and local and Google My Business is really a kind of a perfect place to be able to do that. Um, I like to think of the Google My Business listings like a menu display outside a restaurant. So if everybody can kind of remember way back when, when we were able to grab our friends and family and cruise down a, a city street, we would stop by and peek and everyone would hover around the outside menu to see if there was something that they were specifically interested in. And you, you go up and down all the different sections and, and see what highlights you might be able to find. And you can consider your GMB listing something similar to that. So the more information you have, the better, the more fresh and relevant and timely, the better. And that's true not only for humans, uh, the people that are uh, scrolling and, and looking online, but it's also true for Google as uh, they continue to scan frequently, looking to match search queries with the information either on your website or on your external off-site uh, digital marketing listings. Google My Business really becomes sort of the, the hub for all of that. So again, the more information you have and the more accurate it is uh, and the more fresh and updated it is, the better. So we can kind of get started to talk about what the uh, different elements are that we can address. Um, this is gonna be a very high, high level kind of uh, broad stroke approach. And there is a fair amount of detail on some of these slides. Don't worry about taking notes. Again, like Carissa said, we'll be sending these out to you. But uh, I can just jump in to where to find your GMB listing, just so everybody knows. If you generally Google your uh, business name and uh, sometimes throw a location in there, you'll see that right hand side uh, with the photos. This is the listing that we're talking about. Sometimes um, you will have created one and you can't find it, or there are times that one has not been claimed. And we can definitely help you walk through that. Uh, in order to go ahead and do that, it's called getting verified. So 
really, um, it's a step-by-step -step process. Most of this is not rocket science, but it can become a little bit frustrating if you don't know the, the buttons uh, or the location on the backend data, uh, dashboard to go to. But your first step really is to get verified. Um, you can claim your listing, log in, and uh, it will ask you if you wanna be verified either via email uh, mail or call and they'll give you this code. So that's the little sample code there. That's gonna, many times you can update much of your listing, but the getting into the nitty gritty re re uh, requires you to get uh, verified. And the most important part of this is an accurate location. So uh, Google really wants to know that you are active and an actual business, typically with a brick and mortar or uh, an address that can be located and verified. Getting that right, from the beginning is extremely important. So um, decide if you're gonna use main street and write out S-T-R-E-E-T, -E -E or if you're going to use an abbreviation, decide if the local term um, is, um, again, main street, or if better choice is route 100. Whatever your local area decides to be the most frequently referenced address for you is probably the best, assuming that it's an accurate USPS Postal Service and Google can verify that. This is a side note, uh, many times you're looking to add users, whether you've got property managers, store managers, um, or other folks, marketing agencies that you would like to give access to. And there's a way to do that in the back end uh, dashboard, and it's very simple to just add users, uh, depending on the level of accessibility is, is important. Um, and we can certainly walk you through that if you need to. Adding your business details. So there are obviously many sections, much of them are self-explanatory. Um, you'll see your, your name, address, all the basics, but checking uh, the map location, that can typically be auto-generated. Um, I'm sure we've all done some traveling and you'll wanna head to the beach and if you're putting in Beach Avenue and the actual address is Beach Drive, um, and if the business owner hasn't actually confirmed that correctly with Google, they'll send you potentially to a different city. So make sure that you really go into those details and make sure that the pin on the map is accurate. Um, service areas can be expanded greater than you realize. Many times zip codes, counties, you can really grab that as a broad um, location if you're sort of a, a local geo business if you are a national business you can leave those a little bit broader it's still important to have this in here again just for your for the google to find a hub and for folks to to know that you're up to date um, adding your hours is an obvious there's a short name option that allows uh, users to be able to especially via uh, mobile to be able to share your listing. So if let's just say the friends and family happen to bump into a part of the menu that they like and they wanna share it with somebody, this short name allows that to happen very easily. Um, there are options on multiple sections of the listing to add links. And there's something called a UTM that we'll talk about. But not only is it a link back to your website, but adding the ability to track some traffic that are that's being caught through this uh, listing is really interesting to see and we can talk about that in a moment. Um, services again are like the menu. You wanna make sure that you're grabbing as, as much detail on that as possible so that uh, if one person or one Google scan is looking to match one particular part, you don't wanna forget when the next person or Google scan comes along and looks for either a different iteration of your offerings or something else in a different department. So services are really important. Attributes, women owned, veteran led, those are great things. That's something that's really important. Photos, um, these can be added not only by owners, but also by visitors. And you wanna stay on top of these. Sometimes uh, you'll find a, video, a photo that has either a lesser quality or is showing something that might be out of date. Those can be flagged um, through Google. Sometimes they'll come straight down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Uh, but it's really important to be able to stay on top of those professional photos, virtual tours, videos, anything like that is, is really essential to have on there. Again, the more engagement, the more exciting it looks, the, the uh, more likely people will click through that uh, listing and go to your actual website or reach out to contact you. Adding products, even if you don't sell products, you can add things like floor plans for the multifamily folks 
or um, other items that might be representative that you can uh, further elaborate. And then there's a new development with descriptions. Uh, 750 characters is actually quite a lot. And that gives you a good place to really kind of elaborate on what you offer, but keep in mind that the first 250 are the first visible. So you wanna uh, really keep the uh, introduction paragraph full of the uh, most important information to you. Adding posts. So this has been interesting, uh, especially now through the COVID-19 and all of the different developments. Posts have now gotten more traffic and more attention than ever. So if you go back to that kind of thought of the first screen where the Google listing is, those posts show up kind of towards the bottom. And we're finding the behavior of users is immediately scrolling down there um, because we have sort of trained our, our searchers to find new hours, are you open? What is the caveat to, to you being open? Um, so let's take advantage of that. Adding new posts is just adding uh, the specials of the day. So typically, depending on the type of post you have, after seven days, they get archived. So you'll be able to use an expiration date. Some of them stay up there. Um, Google was very quick to respond with the COVID-19 issue and provided a COVID-19 announcement. And that did end up staying up longer than others. Um, but don't worry, even if they do get archived, you can scroll through there, but your most latest and greatest posts will take precedent. Keep it brief, keep it relevant, add images. You can again add links and send people back to specific landing pages. Really important to kind of think that through uh, when you're thinking about kind of user intent and search intent, kind of pull back and think about what your visitors are really looking for. What's the tone? What's the idea that they really need? Uh, and that's a good place to, to test posts. There's uh, conversion rate optimization and things that we can do to really give you a good balance of, of what works, what doesn't. And this is a great um, kind of risk-free place to, to test that information. Moving on, we've got reviews. And I'm sure we all know the importance of reviews whether it's looking at, again, my analogy with the restaurant, how did things go um, for the, the latest uh, visitors or how are your products? Reviews are important. Um, again, as you can see, 93% of the consumers say that that impacts your purchasing decisions. The best way to do that is to encourage your happy customers to go ahead and pop on there. And it's important to make that easy. So going back to that short name, those URLs um, make it very easy for, hey, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate your business. If you could please respond to this. Very quick, very easy. Um, but most importantly, as a business owner, you do want to respond. I know that it's an ongoing debate to see if uh, leaving them unresponded or unanswered, whether it's a positive or negative, but we are seeing many studies show that the more engagement from a business owner or representative, the better. Um, you we could provide, uh, or you can provide your, your team, those that have access to that sort of templated uh, options, but you don't want them to be canned. So giving your, your team some guidance on what your appropriate responses are is very important. One thing not to do is you really don't wanna get into a, a, a banter online for a negative, um, negative review. A easy way to do that is to just say call the office. But further is, and this is true no matter what um, for any digital marketing or marketing campaign is you really want to relay those reviews and the responses of your customer base back to your team. And this is a really great place to keep that temperature of what's happening out in the world and how it's relaying back to your business. So uh, gathering that data is wonderful, but if you don't apply it and use it sort of as a training tool or as a development tool, it can be sort of a lost cause. So. I encourage you to, to continue to use that as an opportunity to find, find new growth um, or repair things that can be adjusted. Um, there's a section on there called Q&A. Uh, keep in mind here that the Q&A section and the review section and a handful of others uh, during the COVID-19 issue, Google did have to pause just because there was such an influx of the need to update new hours or processes or procedures uh, for the general public to stay safe and to understand uh, what the necess necessities were to continue business. Um, so there are certain scenarios that have been paused 
as things start to ease up, we're seeing those come back into play, which is a positive. Um, and Q&A is one of those. You'll see that uh, this allows you to collect uh, relevant, relevant information. And this can be posted by anybody, including the business owner. So many times you'll go on to uh, a Q&A and you'll see that they've been completely ignored or unreplied. And uh, this is just such a great place to show, again, engagement. And uh, if you're going to be offering those as your business owner, as a side note, this is a great opportunity to uh, develop some SEO content for your website. Many people have uh, frequently asked question sections on their site and being able to uh, further elaborate on that for your GMB listing is a, is a great tool. Um, as you're seeing, you know, as we know, Google continues to develop and, and change their algorithms or change what the user experience is. And you're now seeing or have been seeing the sections of people also asked or people also searched for. These are great ways to um, be able to add more information so that you can uh, continue to stay up to date and uh, serve with Google what people are looking for. There's a couple of SEO tools that we can discuss offline or at a later date. Uh, schema markup is one of those. So if you look at that, uh, there are some sort of backend tools or strategies that we can use that kind of will serve up uh, kind of bite-sized elements of your website or of your business or of your Google listing so that uh, Google can do a quick scan, grab that tidbit of information, and then provide what's called a, a rich snippet. And that will be part of those people also ask or um, some of your search results will start showing up. So improving Q&A is a great, great opportunity for that. Um, from the beginning, we talked about how to track. There's something called a UTM, which is an urchin tracking module. And this is a, there are many tools that you can use to do this to kind of create your own UTM. Um, this will end up falling into Google Analytics. I know that Ellen had touched on some of this last week if you were able to attend that one. And in these campaigns, you'll see that um, this is a great example on the screen. One is this, the, uh, a link or a UTM that was provided for the main website link coming from your GMB listing going to your website. And you'll see that's the majority of them. But as we talked about adding products, uh, floor plans were added to this listing and we were able to add its own UTM link and that provided uh, the user a direct link to the floor plans section of uh, an apartment community's website. And this is able to track that. So it's giving you a great insight of where your traffic's coming from, what other information people are looking for, and uh, really how to develop those landing pages on your website so that people are able to find exactly what they need. Important points about GMB, as we all know, Google is, is a beast and uh, 1.2 trillion searches are performed every year. Um, that blew my mind at 40,000 per second. Um, and one of the benefits about GMB is that it's free. This is something that everybody has access to. Um, it's, it's something that you can develop pretty well on, on your own. Um, but the most important thing is that it does not replace the need for an accurate and up-to-date website. Many folks start to use either their social media pages or other listings like these directories as their main uh, website. And users are really looking for more uh, concrete and credible data. And that, as we know, websites are a, a tool to really elaborate on that. Um, but this does not replace that. It just reiterates the need for fresh information. Um, there are knowledge panels, Google search, Google maps, all of this will auto generate. And um, the more information again you have here, the more it will actually show on other directory listings. So keeping your quote menu fresh frequently is really important, um, you know, just as anything. It's only as valuable as the information you continue to update. And Google, as we understand, uh, has decided to really invest more into these GMB listings. And that's why the, the local SEO search is just so important. Um, you have the opportunity to really develop more details and kind of shift on the fly as, as your business develops or as your needs continue uh, as, as a business owner or as a representative, there are great places to keep that as fresh as possible. 
And then again, going back to other points of marketing, um, it's, it can be a daunting task to keep all of these updated, but uh, it's, it's very important so that when Google does do those scans, it syncs. Uh, we don't want to encourage you to stay on your social media and keep that hot, and then we go back to your website and see that it's, it's out of date. Or we don't want to have your GMB listing be your only place of content, uh, contact for your users. But again, this is a, a wonderful opportunity that you can update new information and uh, be on the top of your game. And I just flew through that. I never know which 20 minutes goes. It either goes too fast or too slow, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So Lexi, we had actually a lot of good questions throughout okay. our presentation. So I'll just um, throw a few of them out there. How many, I think you addressed this, but how many characters are allowed in the GMB paragraph and how does that help with our SEO efforts? That's a great question. There's 750 characters that are allowed and it's an ongoing debate with uh, SEO experts if keywords should or should not be used or are they valuable. Um, at the beginning of that section when they did uh, expand that, there was great uh, belief that adding keywords and SEO optimized content was uh, extremely important as time has gone on. There's uh, some skepticism to know, is that true? In my opinion, as an SEO expert, I do believe any time that you can write uh, meaningful and optimized content, the better. Uh, that is a fine line. You don't, you want to make sure that it is user-friendly content because for the most part, um, not only do users want to be able to really read and relate to your content, but Google can flag what we call keyword stuffy descriptions. But to answer that one, yeah, I do think that it's really important to keep all of your marketing messages targeted to your specific target market, as well as uh, identifying what those keywords may be on your on and offline marketing. So yes, I would include it. I don't know uh, where the, 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 the debate will end on that one. Okay. And then what if you, you work in a virtual office or you're not a brick and mortar business? Um, how would you verify your address? Is there any benefit to doing that? That's a great question. And I, I have to be honest, I've had multiple experiences and I would be happy if someone has, uh, wants to pop in from the team. Um, there have been times that PO boxes or have been uh, able to be used for virtual business or using what could be um, Many times there's um, a collaborative space that has an address, but yes, Google does really typically want to have a firm address. It can be your home address. Um, anywhere that you can receive that postcard would work, but much of these uh, are, much of the business, of course, nationwide, worldwide, is shifting to remote, and I know that Google will be responsive to that. Um, is there any benefit to, if you don't have a brick and mortar location to having a GMB? I believe so, just because again, it acts like the, the portal or the hub. Uh, Google needs a quick place to scan and Google loves Google. So anytime that uh, businesses use any sort of Google listings or Google tools, I believe uh, they might get a little extra point on their scorecard. So yes, um, we've seen also some great success with uh, groups that were acquired by an umbrella uh, brand and Many of those companies had their own uh, business listings that then can go and redirect back into the new um, larger business that may or may not have uh, a brick and mortar location. So yes, absolutely. I believe Google My Business listings are a number one on the top of the list. Okay, cool. So, okay, this one might be a little specific and if so, we can always address it. Um, directly to the person who asked. But sh she says, what happens if we can't verify our business? We have several communities, but not a formal office, and we're having difficulty verifying our Google My Business. So I'm guessing this is coming from one of our multifamily um, sure. on the call. Um, the question that I would ask back is, are you looking to create one for your corporate headquarters, or are you looking to create one for each location? My recommendation is to create one for each location. Again, this is kind of hyper-local, map-specific, information. So um, yes, I believe that each location needs to have their own listing pointing back to their own website and their own landing pages specifically for the section of the GMB. But I also um, 
know that it can be troublesome. So if you're in a position of acquisition and you're looking to verify and it, say, it says uh, this one's already been claimed, there's a place to request access from a previous business owner. Um, sometimes that works seamlessly. Sometimes you do have to wait a bit. I've seen that it takes sometimes if there's an unreplied uh, to request for access, many times it will open up after about seven to 10 days. Sometimes this is a little bit of a waiting game, but yes, it's possible. And yes, we can help you navigate that. Okay, we do have a couple more questions. I know we promised a 30 minute session. So if you have to drop off, that's fine. If you can stick around for a couple more questions, that would be great. Um, so one person has asked, and I think you alluded to these a little bit in your presentation, but what's the difference between GMB profile and knowledge graph? And is one better for a national business? That's a great question. And I do believe that that is evolving just a bit. Everything's sort of fed from this GMB listing. Um, you'll see that there are knowledge panels that are uh, straight for, for uh, national businesses, and those can be claimed in much the same way. Typically, in, in my experience, it has led you right back to these GMB listings where it's sort of your hub for data. All right. And then, Lexi, how frequently would you recommend updating your GMB listing? Is it something we should do daily, weekly? Does it depend on the type of business or if you have something going on? Yeah, um, I think all of those points that you just listed are applicable. Um, again, let's go back to my analogy that it's, it's a bit like a menu, so fresh and relevant. Google loves uh, relevant information, meaning we work really hard as SEO experts to sync up the data of your digital marketing uh, to the actual keywords that people are looking at. And that can be always evolving, right? So not only should your listings and your website be up to date for new promotions, new events, um, but you do also want to look at your photos or reviews or add to the, the Q&A. There are so many elements to this that um, you don't want to focus only on uh, the daily announcement, there are ways to make sure that you're up to date in many sections of this listing. So I would say as, as often as possible, I'm not going to put the pressure on you that you need to be in there every day, but I would say, you know, every, every week, every other week, a couple times a month, you really want to make sure that, especially if your business is active um, and you've got reviews, there's ways to get notifications so that if somebody does leave a review, you can uh, pop right on and, and respond right to that. Again, don't forget, leaving reviews is much like putting out a social media post. Folks will honestly check back to see if they've gotten a like or a response uh, almost immediately. So the longer it goes for you, the longer that uh, review kind of dangles out there, it gives a, a little bit more pressure. So I recommend staying on top of that. Thank you. One last question, I think, but just everyone attending, if you have any more questions, feel free to send them in the chat box. Um, but you had mentioned the schema markup, which I know it's like probably a whole nother uh, lunch and learn topic yeah. on its own. But someone was curious if adding schema markup to their website would help at all with their GMB listing, and if so, how? That's a great question. It's kind of um, a different direction. I do believe that schema markup is important. Um, and again, like you said, schema market can be talked about uh, with much greater detail, but again, it's sort of serving up snippets of the information uh, to, your, to either to your listing or to your website. Your ultimate goal, don't forget, is to get conversions. Um, and it's not just traffic, it's not just, yes, they submitted, but you really want more business. So uh, schema markup will allow, especially with consistent, um, content and keywords, it doesn't do anything but uh, improve both sides of that question. So yes. Okay, awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions in the box, but I would like to add, um, Lexi has uh, put her email here. It's Lexi at resultsrepeat.com. I'm Carissa at resultsrepeat.com. You can also get us at info at resultsrepeat.com. Mm -hmm. If you are leaving this session with questions or you just want us to look at your GMB profile and let you know our thoughts or evaluate it, we would be more than happy to do that. So, you know, questions, evaluation, um, needs to make it better, reach out to us. We're here to help and we really appreciate everyone joining us today. And 
don't forget to come next week to learn about setting up a social media ads campaign. Thanks, Lexi. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.